Greetings, brothers and sisters. Again, this is the Truth of God program where we firmly bear witness there is no God but one. There is no God with him. There is no God besides him. There is no God greater than him. There is no God equal to him. We thank the one and true living God for his divine wisdom, his perfect and infallible understanding of all things. We thank him for being a God of mercy, the true sender and the true teacher of holy prophets and holy apostles, brothers and sisters, viewers, in a time like today, it is a blessing to have the truth of God message in your midst. And it's also of great importance. Now, before we go into the Bible, I understand there's many elderly brothers and sisters that's reaching out to us and can't catch the program. I want you to pay close attention to the information that we are about to relate to you. Uh, you can watch our live webcast without a computer. Now I know many elderly folk may not be computer savvy. I'm not that old, but I'm not even that computer savvy. But you don't have to have a computer to watch our live webcast. If you have a smart TV, just go to Google or YouTube and enter www.thetog.tv. If you got a smart TV or YouTube, you can enter www.thetog.tv. TV, the TOG TV. Now, if you're still having problems and have any uh, questions and need some assistance to log on, you can contact uh, our brother, Brother Marvin Clark, at 757 279 47. For six. We're doing this for all of you that's having some form of technical difficulty in getting this program because there are hundreds and I mean hundreds that are reaching out to us who don't want to miss it. So if you're having forms of technical difficulty, contact our brother who's head of that department, Brother Marvin Clark, at 757. 279-4746. Once again, go to www.thetog.tv and for assistance, reach Brother Marvin Clark, 757-279-4746. And God willing, he'll guide you and help you to get on the right track because nobody should miss this message. This is the most valuable, most important of all messages that is in the earth today. Whether there's a pandemic or not pandemic, it isn't because of the situation that make this message so important. This message have been important since God been God. And brothers and sisters, uh, so many thousands have emailed. I got the emails just was flooding into the truth of God since last Sunday. We always get thousands of emails anyway. But uh, since that message that this is the beginning of sorrows, it's just so many thousands. Many are saying they never thought of being baptized, repenting of their sins and going down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. And yet they've been watching this message and enjoying it for years. But something about last week's message is breaking the mindset of stubborn 
men and women. Well, you have two choices, viewer, just two. Be wise or be a fool. As I said last week, the whole world needs to humble itself and repent before God. I was told after that message later on in the week, I believe it was the governor or mayor, or one of the political officials in Houston, got over the air and cried with the cameras in front of him, begging God to forgive the United States of America for her evil deeds. America has proven to be arrogant. America has proven to be beside herself. For America through the years have pointed out the wicked, the ungodly behavior, the rebelliousness, the contrariness of all other nations but herself. But since this virus has hit the world, God did not leave one nation out, not one, showing the entire world God is holding creation hostage. You are hostage today, viewer. You are a hostage. Your money can't free you. Your status in life can't free you. Your position can't free you. All freedom, all liberation, all healing come from one. Thank God and God is he. So, you that are tuned in, you reach out to your family members. I don't care how foolish they are and preachers that are listening. I want to greet all of our brothers and sisters around the world throughout America, Canada, South America, throughout all the Caribbean, throughout Europe, Africa, Asia, the South Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, Belgium, Germany, to all of the followers of the truth of God by the millions. You're going to thank God for this message when you stand before God. Now, I want to call your attention and I want you to take your time and follow me in your Bible and listen good. We're going to begin in the book of Galatians, the third chapter. And we're going to begin at the first verse. And I want you to judge yourself according. All my critics, doesn't mean nothing now. You're going to have to come back to Bible. Who? Everybody. I want to thank God for the thousands of requests, prayers that people are sending up. There's so many prayer requests, even in our behalf and in the behalf of Brother Williams all over internet asking God to keep us both while we bring to you the word of God. And then you have some that says, don't pray for him. Let's hope he gets sick. <laughs> well, if I do get sick, and if they are able to bring a camera on my sick face, I'm going to tell you with a whisper, repent and be baptized. I'm still going to get it out if God be my helper. Everybody in the world must come around to God's eternal word. Why are you so foolish? Human family, why are you so stubborn? In the midst of this madness, New Orleans still celebrated a Mardi Gras. Out there with no fear, no God, all wild and foolish. But the virus didn't spare them. And then traveled through other Mardi Gras and now there are many in Louisiana affected now. What does this prove, brothers and sisters and viewers? 
that the mercy of the Most High has been taken for granted for years, years, years. You have bowed to idols trying to discredit God for being God. You have prayed to statues. You have bowed to men and claimed them to be the Lord of creation. You have prayed to women that are dead. You have prayed to images of monkeys and elephants, snakes. You have prayed to Buddha. You have went after everything <coughs> other than God. What do God have to do to make the entire world return to him? What does God have to allow next? You bear in mind in the days of Moses, one thing didn't take place. Several things came. Glory to God and regardless of how stubborn Pharaoh became at the end he acknowledged that Moses God was God I'm saying that to all the world you're going to acknowledge glory to God that God Almighty is God and you that won't admit it all right be stubborn but this is what I by God's permission want to bring to all our viewers this afternoon all right listen at this and follow me and get me galatians chapter 3 we're starting at verse 1. O foolish galatians who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth look at the apostle paul born in tarsus in the city of cilicia set under the feet of galmelia who was taught according to the perfect manner of the law and the Apostle Paul was taught by this Pharisee, this doctor of the law, Galmelian. Brother Paul was taught according to the perfect manner of the law. On his way to Damascus one day, God stopped him. A light shined from heaven above the brightness of the sun and deprived him of his strength. And thank God took his vision away. A voice spoke from heaven and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord, get that, not the Lord's, L-O-R-D-S, not that foolish talk. The Lord said, I, not we are, I am Jesus. And told him that it is hard for thee they kick against the prick. You're kicking now, viewer. The churches and religions of the world have been kicking against God since you've been on the earth. Glory to God, but just like a time came that brother Saul bowed and humbled himself, so will you. Listen at what the Apostle Paul spoke by God's permission to those that was in Galatia. Listen at this. Oh, Give chapter and verse again. Galatians chapter 3, we're at verse 1. All right. Oh, foolish Galatians. Oh, foolish, foolish. Oh, foolish America. Oh, foolish Europe. Oh, foolish Africa. Oh, foolish Canada. Oh, foolish South America. Oh, foolish Netherlands. Foolish Asia. Foolish world. Who hath bewitched you? Tricked you. That you Who hath not? bewitched you? Who hath deceived you? Who made a fool out of you? Thank God that you should not obey the truth. Who got you this way? How did you get so stubborn? What is it about God that you hate? You know, there are many now, morning, for their dead. They're mourning for their dead. Mourning for them. And we mourn for our dead for a period of time. 
but you mourn for a fool the lifetime of the fool. You mourn for the dead just for a while, but a fool, you may find yourself mourning for them all their life. Where is that at, Pastor Jennings? I want to go to the Old Testament, to the 22nd chapter of the book of Ecclesiasticus, or the 22nd chapter of the book of Sarich. Begin at the 11th verse. Follow me and get me. In Ecclesiasticus chapter 22, we'll start at verse 11. Listen at this. Weep for the dead. Weep for the dead. For he hath lost the light. And there are many now passed away. I heard the other day, infant passed away as a result of this virus. Amen. Well, God give life, God take life. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. The Bible says, Weep for the dead. Weep for the dead. For he hath lost the light. He lost the light. And weep for the fool. Weep for the fool. For he wanteth understanding. He want understanding. Make little weeping for the dead. Make little weeping for the dead. For he is at rest. He is at rest. But the life of the fool. Uh oh. But the life of a fool is worse than death. The life of a fool? But the life of the fool. The life of a fool. Is worse than death. Why? Why is the life of a fool worse than death? When one dies, the Bible said the dead knoweth nothing. But the life of a fool is worse than death because while the fool live, they have a chance to get right with God. And yet they keep rejecting. So how long when this pandemic pass? And viewers, we're not over the air giving you false hope, trying to make a prediction. You know these false prophets, my God, they are so evil. They're all over social media making predictions that the pandemic won't last but three more weeks, but two more weeks another month the bible says who know the mind of the lord pastor jennings do you know no i don't know only thing i do know is to trust god while it's going on and even after he leaves i do know that it will leave the earth why it is not god will for it to remain here forever and ever or it take God, but God have gotten the attention of the world. The attention of the world. He got your attention. Oh, yes, he do. The life of a fool. But the life of the fool. Is what? Is worse than death. So, look at the human family. How foolish you are. Some of you are praying now. But how long will it last? Let's, let me put you on the stand and question you. When this pandemic pass, when it pass, politician, are you going to remember the poor? When it pass, policemen, are you going to stop racial profiling? Mm -hmm. When it pass, judges and preachers, are you going to stop same-sex marriages? When it pass, Congress, are you going to tear up the gay rights bill? When it pass, are you going to get rid of that clause in the Constitution that make people of color three-fifths of a human being? When it pass, Glory to God. Do you hear this? But the life of the fool. The life. Or are you going to keep being a fool? When it pass, are your hearts going to be convicted enough that you will take every rainbow flag down off your churches? When it pass. When it pass, are you
Are you going to stop selling drugs in your neighborhood, Mr. and Miss Dope Dealer, when it passed? Are you going to allow yourself to be that humble? When it passed, you worthless fathers, are you going to be fathers now to your sons and daughters? Glory to God. When it passed. When it passed, are you going to get the women preachers out of the pulpit? Are you going to baptize right now? Everybody in the name of Jesus Christ, when it passed. Because as long as you're a fool, your life is worse than death. It's worse than death. That's something, isn't it? Huh? Do you hear what it's at? But the life of the fool. Get all of it. Weep for the dead. Weep. And they're crying too. You see now they're opening up buildings that look like warehouses. Lining up caskets by thousands. Now they have been pushed out of time into eternity. But death don't phase everybody. Amen. Some people not moved by the dead. Foolish, young college people. All out there on the beach, half naked. Drinking beer, dancing around. Acting like a fool and the parents Many of them know their kids are out there, but many of the parents are just as foolish as the children. Eh? Weep for the dead. Holy Ghost say, cry for the dead. For he has lost the light. He has lost the life. And weep for the fool. Why? For he wanteth understanding. Mm -hmm. Make little weeping for the dead, for he is at rest. He is at rest. But the life of the fool. But the life of a fool is worse than death. Glory to God. The one scripture says, she that live in pleasure is dead while she lives. I want to take my time and really just soak this in your mind. You men that been beating up your wives and shooting up with heroin and snorking cocaine. And are you going to change now? When the pandemic pass, are you going to change? Did this virus strike enough fear for you to turn to God permanently? Are you afraid now enough to turn to God permanent? Glory to God. I'm crying out in the wilderness of America now. What did he say, son? Weep for the dead. Weep for the dead. For he has lost the light. He lost the light. At the light. He lost the light. And, uh -huh. and weep for the fool. Weep for the fool. For he wanteth understand. He want understand. Make little weeping for the day. Yes. For he is at rest. Uh -huh. But the life of the fool. The life of a fool. Is worse than death. Oh, God. Worse. I want to say to all members of the human race. I was out here acting like a fool now, smoking and gambling and rejecting the counsel of God. God say your life is worse than a dead man. Dead, you know, that's something for God to say. Your life is worse than a dead man. Why? Because God is giving you a chance, but instead of humbling yourself and obeying him, you're chasing men, you're chasing women, you're chasing more than one God. You're hopping from religion to religion. You're cussing God until some of you are so educated. Thank God until you have denounced the existence of God himself. Eh? Weep for the dead. I'm crying for you. Weep. Lord, take God, weep for the dead. For he hath lost the light. He hath lost the light. And weep for the fool. And sometime a fool will go to a funeral and look at the dead. Pour liquor on the body. Amen. Throw, sprinkle some cocaine powder down in the grave. Fool. Leave the burial site and go party. Leave the burial site. They just right on the back of their cars and SUV. Rest in peace, my homie. Rest in peace, my dog. And then they go back and party, drink, snort the same cocaine that the friend died. 
What is death now? They don't fear death because they don't honor life and they don't honor God. Weep for the fool. Weep for who? For the fool. Who oh, shall we weep over? Weep for the fool. For he wanteth understanding. He want understanding. Cry. Mothers and fathers now are crying over their foolish son, their foolish daughter. Amen. Her wives are crying over their foolish husband. Husbands are crying over the foolish wife. Amen. God says weep for the fool and look at the governments of the world. My, 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 my. How foolish you are. You know, when this virus first hit, even the president downplayed it. Amen. He called it a hoax. Huh? That's the way folks are about God. They say, ah, oh, it ain't no God. Well, God saw you, and God used the same language. He said, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. So the Bible come back and say, Weep for the fool. Weep for the fool. For he wanteth understanding. He want understanding. Make little weeping for the Make dead. Make little weeping for the dead. For he is at rest. He's at rest. But the life of the fool. But the life of a fool. Is worse than is death. worse than death. Seven days do men mourn for him that is Seven dead. Seven days. Meaning a period of time. A man mourn for him. I want you to listen at this good. Give chapter and verse, Williams. Now in the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, we're at verse 12. Pay attention, viewers. Seven days do men mourn for him that is dead. Seven days men mourn for him that is dead. But for a fool. For a fool. And an, and an ungodly man. And an ungodly man. All the days of his life. You weep for a dead person for a period of time. That's what the seven days represent. Oh, period of time. But when it come time to weep for a fool. And an ungodly man. And a man that don't want God. All the days of his life. How long? All the days of his life. Look at you now. Look at you. Drinking and partying and acting like a fool because you can't come out your house. You're on the inside, doing the same thing you would do on the outside. Same thing. You went to your parties and danced and smoked, and now you're doing the same thing in the house. Eh? Same thing. What is it going to take? What is it going to take? For you to stop living together, not married. Do God got to direct the virus to your second husband or your third wife? What is it going to take for you to stop lying that is three gods? Do God have to smite you to make you bow and pray to one? What is it going to take? To make you realize that Mary, the mother of Jesus, cannot answer nobody prayer. Glory to God, you better hear the old man now. The word of God says, Seven days do men mourn for him that is dead. You better stop this play in church. You better stop this play in church. You false prophets over social media giving the people false hope. Telling them that the Lord spoke to you and said the pandemic on pass in three days and, and, and stop that playing with God. Stop playing with God. You better get this. Seven days. Seven days. Do men mourn for him oh, that is dead? Blessed be the name of God. Do men mourn for him that is dead? But for a fool. But a fool. And an ungodly man. And an ungodly man. All the days of, of his life. All the days of his existence. Why? Notice it says a fool and a ungodly man. man. You mourn for him all the days of his life because he just give you trouble. He give you problems. I don't care what happened. 
he or she don't want to hear nobody. They don't want God in their life. They don't want to accept God. They don't want to repent of their sins. Don't want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't want the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Don't want to pray. Don't want to fast. All they want to do is act like a fool all day. Get girlfriends, get boyfriends, bet on the race, bet on the big number that is in your state. Don't want to give God no time. Amen. I guarantee when this pandemic passed and now we are, we, we are pro, we in spring weather too, you're going to find them even out on the corners, out drinking again. Because the drug dealer, one thing about the pandemic, it haven't stopped the drug dealer. Eh? He haven't stopped the drug dealer. Not at all. He, he's still going to peddle his, he's going to seek to get his drugs through your community one way or the other. Why? They love money more than they value life. Feel us? There is a universal hate, a universal hatred towards God. Thank God, amen. And that hatred that's in men towards God drive them to hate this message of holiness because this message is against the will of the flesh. Eh? You hear what the word of God says? Seven days do men mourn for him that for is dead. For a period of time does men mourn for him that is dead. But for a fool. A fool? And an ungodly man. And an ungodly man. All the days of his life. People get on me about calling names, but let's get the next verse. Listen at this. Now in Ecclesiasticus 22 and verse 13. I want you to hear this. Talk, uh, talk not much with a fool. Don't talk much with a fool. And go not to him that has no understanding. Don't go to him that don't understand. Beware of him. Beware of him. Lest thou have trouble. Lest you have trouble. And thou shalt never be defiled with his fooleries. Yes. Depart from him. De leave him. And thou shalt find rest. You'll have some peace in your life. And never be disquieted with madness. What else? Who is, what is heavier than Listen. lead? Give chapter and verse for this. Now in Ecclesiasticus 22, we're at verse 14. Give chapter and verse again. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22 and verse 14. Ecclesiasticus, or the book of Sarich. I want to show you, viewers, what's heavier. I, I, I want to show you this. Listen at this. In the book of Ecclesiasticus 22 and verse 14. All right. What is heavier than lead? <laughs> What's heavier than lead? And what is the name thereof? What do you call it? What's the name of it? But a fool. <laughs> do you hear this? What is heavier What's than lead? What's heavier than lead? And what is the name thereof? What is the name of that thing that's heavier than lead? But a fool. A fool. Fool. You know, no one can say it like God. Nobody. Here, 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 here. Nobody. Viewer, are you heavier than lead today? Are you so wicked and so foolish and so rebellious? Don't let your mother or father or so-called pastor or church go and turn you against this message. This is the only message over social media or any form of media. Thank God that points you direct to the Bible. No opinion, no idea, none of it. Amen. No pre-planned messages, nothing written out. Didn't study all the week. They give you a message to pitch you up. No, sir. Ah! Amen. Someone said, well, I want something to encourage you. I'm encouraging you to stop being a fool. What do you mean? Lay down your hard-headedness. Lay down your rebelliousness. Repent and be baptized. Who? Who, Pastor Jennings? Every one of you. You know, we already have always gotten, amen, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of requests. People want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. But brother, brother, I said, since this pandemic hit the earth and that message hit creation last Sunday, that these are the beginning of sorrows? Mine, Lord, 
the hundreds upon hundreds of international and domestic requests. Pastor Jennings, please, I, we want to be baptized. Want to be baptized. Even atheists are writing, admitting they were atheists and saying, now we know that God is God. And everything must get ready to humble yourself. You might as well do it. Don't even let no preacher, no devil, no demon try to steer you their direction. We are staring you to God. Who is it? Christ is he. Jesus is he. Eh? Do you hear what the Bible says? What is heavier than lead? Viewers, what is heavier than lead? And what is, what is heavier than lead? You know, you got some people, my God, their stubbornness, their rebelliousness, and their, their, their hard-headedness is very heavy. What do you mean? It's burdensome to you. You ever talk to someone over and over and over and you can't get through to him? You can't get through to her? You just can't tell them nothing. They think they know everything and don't know nothing. You show them in the Bible that is one God and the fool is still said It's three. You show them in the Bible it's one God and the fool is still said It's two. You show them in the Bible it's one God and the fool is still said It's five. What condition are they in? Heavier than lead. They are heavier than lead. Eh? Amen. You show them in the Bible where it speaks plain. Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. But what condition are they in? Heavier than lead. You show them in the Bible that there's only one church. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. They push it off. What are they? Heavier than lead. Thank God you show them in the Bible that your God so loved the world. He didn't just love black folk and just love white folk, but he loved the world that he gave his only begotten son or he offered up that body that was conceived in the house of David in the tribe of Judah. You showed him that he died for everybody. What are they? Heavier than lead. Heavier. <laughs> oh, thank God for his word. Heavier than what? Heavier than lead. You show them in the Bible that first in the church of apostles, they say, ain't no more apostles now. What are they? Heavier than lead. Secondarily, prophets, they won't accept that. Heavier than lead. And yet the Bible said divine healing is still here. Heavier than lead. These signs shall follow them that believe it shall speak in new tongue. Heavier than lead. Anything that they reject in the Bible, you're heavier than lead. Heavier than lead. What is it? And what is the name thereof? What is the name thereof? But a fool. Foolish. Fool. Blind. Come on to holiness, viewers. Holiness is a life raft. It's a life raft. And here you out there swimming in sin, sinking. Thank God, but the life raft of holiness is just floating by with the prophets and the apostles right upon it. Eh? Thank God in the current that's pushing this message to you is the current of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You better go back to the third chapter of the book of Galatia, son. Back in Galatians chapter 3 and it's verse 1. It's something how the prophets and the apostles got the self-same spirit from God and working on the same thing here. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? It was, how did you get so bewitched? How did you get so bewitched? that you will follow anything. How did you get so bewitched that you will see plainly in the Bible, here or Israel, the Lord our God is one. And you get your little diploma, your little doctorate of nothing degree, and you come out with three persons and two gods and five gods and in India over three million gods. How did you get so blind that you would actually stand in front of an image on a cross and pray to a statue? How did you get so foolish? How did you get so blind that you would have an image of Confucianists in your house or Buddha and pray to it? Foolish. How did you get so foolish now? Amen. That you think man can do what only God can do. 
How did you get this foolish? How did you fall so far away from God? Oh, foolish Galatians. Listen at this. Oh, foolish Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians. Galatians. Who has bewitched you? What? Who has bewitched you? The media have bewitched millions today. Oh, the media have downplayed the reality of God. They are bewitched by media. They are bewitched by religion. They are bewitched by money. They are bewitched for the love of men, for the love of women, for the love of popularity. Their position of wealth bewitched them. Their status bewitched them. They have become bewitched by what they possess and what they own. They have sold their soul to the devil. They have turned their back on God and turned to the Illuminati and Masonry and because they have gotten caught up in these secret societies so they can socialize with their own kind, they have become bewitched. Who has bewitched you? Who have bewitched you? Democrats. You? Who bewitched you? Republicans. Who bewitched you? Movie stars, actors and actresses. Who bewitched you, false prophet? Who bewitched you, Mr. Apostle? Elder, bishop, half pint deacon? Who bewitched you? Who has that you should not obey Acts 238. Who bewitched you? You say it's in the Bible. Repent! Repent! Who will take God and be baptized? Hallelujah! Every one of you! Thank God in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But well, who bewitch you now? Who bewitch you and told you? Baptism is the outward sign of inward grace. You don't need it. You don't have to have it. It ain't necessary. Who bewitch you? Who bewitch you? Your love for your preacher is greater than your love for God until you will take his opinion over the Bible. You will take his views over the Bible. You will take his logic over the Bible. Anytime you take anybody's opinion, anybody's views, anybody's logic over the infallible, perfect wisdom of God, thank God you're heavy like lead. Heavier than lead. Eh? Heavier than lead. I said you're heavier than lead. What is heavier than lead? What? Is Who heavier than take lead. God. Who take God. What's heavier? Heavier than you lead. You better give chapter and verse because I, I don't want nobody to escape from this scripture here. Back in Ecclesiasticus chapter 22 and verse 14. All right. What is heavier than lead? What's heavier than lead? And what is the name thereof? What did you call it? A fool. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it? A fool. Look at you. Hey man, you got your limousine down and got your freezerator in your car and bottles of champagne and sitting in your back car vaping. Hey man, you in your house watching this program, even though the pandemic is going on, you're still living together, living together, not married. You allow your relationship to be heavier than lead. Heavier than lead. Huh? Heavier than lead. Thank God. You love your money and you hate God. Your love for money is heavier than lead. Your love for that religion that's not found in the book is heavier than lead. And when the Holy Ghost said, What is heavier than lead? What is heavier than lead? And what is the name thereof? What do you call it? But a fool. A fool. What do you call it? A fool. A fool. My God, man, I, I, I love this. No one wisdom, no one can word it any better than God. Go back to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus chapter 22, and you better begin at verse 11 again. Amen. Let's, let's leave Galatia, the third chapter, for now. We'll go back to that. Back Come on, son. Back in Ecclesiastes, chapter 22 and verse 11. Follow me, viewers. Weep for the dead. Weep for the dead. For he hath lost the light. And they're doing that now. They're weeping for mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, grandfathers, uncles, aunts. Amen. Politicians. Thank God they lost their light. Amen. They lost their light, meaning they light, their life itself. The light of a man is the life of a man. And when the light go out, God takes that life out of him. And now he or she is pushed out of time right into judgment. Or rather, should I say, pushed out of time 
into eternity waiting for judgment. All right. Weep for the day. Weep for the day. For he has lost the light. Uh -huh. And weep for the fool. Yes. For he wanteth understanding. Uh -huh. Make little weeping for the dead. Yes. For he is at rest. Yes. But the life of the fool is worse than death. The life of the fool. Oh, you see, a fool don't look at his life being worse than death. A fool say, live it up. That's what a fool say. You can look at a fool out there partying, having a big time. You know what they say? This is the life. And that's what they say. That's right. They use that term. Oh, man, this is the life. All right, let's take what you say and compare it with what God said. But the life of the fool. The life, the life. The life of a fool is worse than death. Amen. All right, foolish man and foolish woman. Your life that you're living, I don't care if you don't believe it. You don't have to believe it. But your life is worse than death. There are many of you looking at me now. You know this is the truth. Look around your house. You've been watching this program for years and years. Sitting there with your joint still in your house, your liquor all in your house, your bar still there, your six pack. Hey Amen. You were one of the ones that stood in line. Hey Amen. Before the liquor stopped, the liquor store closed. You got all them cases of whiskey. And I'm telling you, brother and sister, fool, take that case. Don't give it to nobody. Don't sell it to nobody. Take every bottle and pour that liquor down the toilet get on your knees and repent to God for being a fool huh? but the life you of drug dealer you out here in the midst of a pandemic still out here selling your dope you're so foolish you're so wicked you're so ungodly why why is it that so many millions ignore this message don't want to hear it because they have no fear no respect for God they love money. They love prestige. They love women more than they love God. Eh? They love men, party, women, fast cars, jewelry, fast life, more than God. Oh, red take God, but I'm telling you right now, God gonna hit you. Eh? Yes, he is. God Almighty gonna hit you. He's hitting the world now. He's hitting the world now. Glory to God, even preachers. Some of the preachers don't want to go in their church. They're broadcasting from home. Eh? Amen. They're in their home, but glory to God, you're not safe there. Oh, no. Thank God. Amen. When the death angel passed through Egypt, glory to God, all the firstborn of every Egyptian in the house. Amen. They wasn't safe inside of their house. The death angel stepped in the house. Thank God and took the first horn, hallelujah, of every Egyptian. You can stay in your house and never come out. Oh, it take God, but you will never hide from God. Until the prophet said, if I lay my bed in hell, God is there. You better run. Thank God. Where, where shall we run, Pastor Jennings? You better run on to the truth of God and surrender your mind mind, your soul, your heart, your body, and stop being an American fool, a Canadian fool, a South American fool, a European fool, an Asiatic fool. Stop being a fool. Thank God and give up your foolishness and turn your life in the hands of Almighty God. Weep for the day. What? Weep for the day. Blessed be the name of the Most High. Weep for the day. Cry. Mourn. Shed some tears. For the day. Who attack God for the dead. For he hath lost the light. Oh, he lost the light. And weep for the fool. Weep for the fool. For he wanteth understanding. He won't understand. Make little weeping for the day. Uh, make little weeping for the dead. For he is at rest. He's at rest. His, life, his life is over. He, he can't come back and do nothing. Amen. The dead cannot come back and repeat nothing. The dead can't come back and correct nothing. The dead can't come back and repent for nothing. The dead can't come back and redo one thing. Uh -huh. But the life of the fool. But the life of a fool. Is worse than death. I'm talking to you, viewer. 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 You that know you a fool, I'm talking to you. All them that put a thumbs down, I'm talking to you. 
Amen. Amen. I'm talking to you. Glory take God. Glory take God. Glory take God. But the life of the fool. The life of the fool. Glory take God. Eh? Amen. Amen. That, I, I, that thing just down in me and it just pushes me to preach this, do you know? The life of, of a, a fool is worse than death. I'm warning you. I'm warning you, Mr. and Mrs. Fool. Hey, King Fool. Queen Fool. Amen. Political Fool. So-called reverend fool, apostle fool, prophet fool, amen, elder fool, bishop fool, assistant fool pastor, and junior fool preacher. Huh? What did he say? But the life of the fool. Your life! Of the fool. You got your Rolls Royce because you don't rob the people. <laughs> your life of a fool. Is worse than death. And you riding around in your Rolls Royce, your Bentley, your Ferrari, got your fingernails all buff, thank God, and got rings on every finger. You got your fake blessing plan, thank God, and here you got your fake miracle water, hiring people to sit in wheelchairs to pretend like they can't walk, and you come along and pay them off. Throw your hands on them, they jump out the wheelchair because they don't have enough fear that they'll make mockery of God and pretend like God done healed them. But the life of the fool, the life of the fool, of a fool, is worse than death. Worse than death. Worse than death. Worse than death. Seven days. Seven days. Do men mourn for him that is you dead? You mourn for a dead person for a period of time. But for a fool. But for a fool. And an ungodly man. And an ungodly man. All the days of his life. All the days. And you find all of them that speak against the truth of God. Foolish. Foolish, they, they hear all this Bible. Amen. They can't even deny the fact that we lay in the Bible. I mean, we lay in it like a termite in wood. Eh? Lay in the Bible. But it doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter how much Bible you bring to a fool. They don't want it. They don't want it. Why? Because the Bible is against the will of man. You better give me the eighth chapter, if you will, quickly of the book of Romans oh and begin at verse 1. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Let me show you the, the condition of man here. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh. Who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit. But after God. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. Hath made me made free from me the law of sin and death. From the law of sin and death. For what the law could not for do. For what the law could not do in that. It was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son. In the likeness of sinful flesh. And that's what God did. He sent his son into the world. Where did he come from? He came out the house of David. And from the tribe of Judah, the prophecy of the Son of God came from heaven, thank God. And then the formation of the Son of God was formed in the house of David, in the tribe of Judah, in the womb of the woman, Mary. Thank God when it came out the womb, Paul said, it is quite evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Huh? God sending his own son. God sent his own son. In the likeness of sinful flesh. In the likeness. He appeared, thank God, as sinful flesh. He appeared as sinful flesh. He was in the likeness of it. And, and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. In the flesh that the righteousness, that the of, the righteousness law of the law might be, be fulfilled, fulfilled in us. Filled in us. Who walk not after the flesh. Who don't walk after the flesh. But after the spirit. Now, that's what make men and make women remain a fool and fight the word of God because of their love for the flesh. You tell that man or woman you got to stop smoking, they say, word in the Bible, it's wrong to smoke. Huh? That's what they said. But you let the doctor tell them, if you don't stop smoking, you're going to die. <laughs> they, don't ask, they don't ask the doctor, where in the, where in the Bible, I'm going to die. They don't ask the doctor nothing. You tell the doc, you tell that sinner, you need to stop drinking because the Bible says wine is a marker, strong drink is raging. He that is deceived thereby is not wise. You'll find that sinner fight your tooth and nail. There ain't nothing wrong with drinking a little as long as I do it in moderation. Let the doctor come and say, listen, uh, Mr. Cunningham, uh, if, you, if you take one more shot of liquor, you're going to die. 
He gonna listen to the doctor. <clears throat> huh? He gonna, he, gonna, he, he gonna deny himself. Glory to God of that bottle. Let the word of God tell him. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Amen. You tell that man, listen, you better stop with those women for you end up with HIV, amen, or herpes or chlamydia. He yes, hey, listen, I'm going to have all the fun I can. Let a doctor tell him. If you don't, if you don't stop, you're going to have only five days to live. Before you know it, that man going to become a monk, shave his head off, and leave a little circle of hair on the top of his head. Huh? Do you see what I'm telling you? Why? It is, the, it is the nature of man. When you tell a man what the Bible said, he fight. He fight, which goes to show you's a fool. You got to be a fool. In the days of Noah, God gave Noah a message. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Who showed more intelligence, man or animals? The animals showed more intelligence than man. Think of it. Think of it, viewers. Here, 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 viewers. Out of all the many hundreds of thousands that walked the earth in the days of Noah, only eight, only eight was saved by water. Noah and his family were saved by water. You think it was only eight people in the earth? There was more people than that in the earth. Or it's a God, but Noah, he warned them. God gave man 120 years. Glory to God and Methuselah and Noah warned the people 120 years. And after that, mine, the windows of heaven opened up and the fountains of the deep were broken. Rain descended and the water rose up in the earth. But after Noah and his family got in the ark and the ark closed, then they want to hear, but it was too late. Out of all that time that God gave the world to get right in Noah's day, 120 years, man was too stubborn, man was too hard-headed, man was too much of a fool, man was too much high-minded to turn and get right with God. After the water subsided and then they had peace, what did man do? For a while, fear God, went right back, acting like a fool again. Just look at here now, back in 1918, I believe uh, right after or during World War I, the Spanish flu hit. And uh, the Spanish flu killed more than all of them that died in World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and Vietnam combined. The Spanish flu killed more than all four wars combined. After the Spanish flu left the earth, after the Spanish flu left the earth, they went right back the same way like it never hit. Huh? And man, even when the AIDS pandemic spread, men kept his draws down. Huh? Didn't care. Glory to God. What do you mean? It doesn't matter what hit the earth. Man going to still be rebellious and man going to be hard head and women too. What is it going to take? What is it going to take before you repent of your sins? What is it going to take? And then the devil put you in some religion and tell you, Ah, uh, God is too nice. God won't afflict man. God won't put no harm on you. God won't cause nothing to happen to you. Don't you know God can make you sick? Now I better get Bible for this quickly. Don't you know God Almighty can make you sick? I believe one scripture says I will make thee sick. In smiting thee. Micah chapter 6 and verse 13. Give chapter and verse again. Micah chapter 6 and verse 13. The book of Micah. Chapter 6. The 6th chapter. And verse 13. And the 13th verse. Viewers, I want you to read with me. Read with me. Read with me. Read with me. The 6th chapter of the book of Micah. And verse and the 13. 13th verse. Therefore also I will make Begin thee at sick. verse 12. At verse 12. For the rich men thereof are full of violence. Verse 11. Verse 11. 
Shall I count them pure with Verse the, 10. Verse 10. Are there yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked? Yes. And the scant measure that is abominable? Eh. Shall I count them pure with the wicked balances? Yes. And with the bag of deceitful weights? God sent the prophet Micah to preach to the people. For, eh. for the rich men thereof are full of violence. The rich men thereof are what? Are full of violence. Oh, rich men make millions off war. Huh? Amen. That's why you find rich men, many of them, they don't want no bloodshed to stop. They don't want no bloodshed to stop. That's why you got a lot of people now that uh, went into prison business. They are private owners of prison. And a private owner of a prison don't want crime to stop. He's investing and she is investing in your murder, investing in your rape. Investing in your bloodshed, investing in your extortion, investing in your arsenic, investing in all your wicked behavior because when they invest in the prison stock, they're looking forward to you to rob and steal and smoke and drink and act like a fool. They are depending on you to commit crime because your crime determines their wealth. Ah! For the rich men thereof. The rich men thereof. Are full of violence. Oh, this message is covering everything. It's full of violence. And the inhabitants thereof. And the inhabitants thereof. Have spoken lies. Have spoken lies. And their tongue is deceitful. Their tongue is deceitful. In, in their mouth. In their mouth. Therefore also. Therefore also. Will I make thee sick. In smiting God thee. God said, I make you sick and smiting you. In making thee desolate. I make you desolate. Because of thy sins. Because of what? Because of thy sins. What? Because of thy sins. There ain't no one can do that but God. And then God give the reason. Therefore also will I make thee sick in smiting thee. What? In making thee desolate. Uh -huh. Because of thy sins. What else? Thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied. Glory to God. Wait a minute. Thou shalt what? Thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied. One of the symptoms of the virus, you lose the taste in your mouth. Huh? You lose the taste in your tongue. You can't get satisfaction from your food. Thou shalt eat. You shall eat. But not be satisfied. But you won't be satisfied. And thy casting down. And thy casting down. Shall be in the midst of thee. Shall be in the midst of you. And thou shalt take hold. And you shall take hold. But shalt not deliver. And you won't deliver. And that which thou deliverest will I give up to the sword. Do you hear this? Do you hear this? So what it going to take for you, America, Africa, Europe, Canada? Argentina, Brazil, all the Asiatic world, Europe. What are it going to take for you? Jamaica, Bahamas, Barbados. What are it going to take for you? China, Japan, Cuba. Stop all the bloodshed. You men. Stop using young men to do drive-by shootings just to get initiated in gangs. You wouldn't want no one to take your son and initiate him. Break up your folly ground, gangster disciples. Break up your folly ground, bloods, crips, MS-13. Break it up. One thing about this virus, you can be a blood. It won't turn. The virus ain't scared of you. The virus is not scared of the Crips. The virus is not scared of no gang. And the virus is not a Democrat or Republican. Come on back to Bible. Come on back to Bible. I'm calling for the world. Come back to Bible. Oh, it take, Hallelujah. Oh, it take God. Do you hear? What did he say? Still in uh, Micah chapter 6 and verse 13. Come on, son. Therefore also will I make thee sick. God said. Therefore also will I make thee sick. What God are you talking about? Jehovah, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Amen. Amen. The God Almighty that made the apostles himself. Christ is talking. Therefore Jesus also. Jesus is talking. I will make thee sick and smiting thee. In making he said, I will do it. I will do it. Are you that arrogant now? Are you that arrogant? Are you that foolish? 
What are you going to do now? Hey Amen. You got your pool table in your house. Why don't you submit and put your pool sticks down? Stop your card game. Stop your checking. Stop your chess. Put your cigarette out. Hmm? Put your cigarette out. All abortion clinics closed down. Huh? Glory to God. Go back to Ecclesiasticus. Back in Ecclesiastes 22 and verse 11. Come on. Weep for the dead. Weep for the dead. For he hath lost the light. Oh, this is a message from God. God knows. Weep for the dead. And for everybody that are watching me now knows somebody who lost their light. Their light went out. Eyes was open but couldn't see nothing. God snatched their breath. Thanks be unto God right out of their body. God did it. Huh? And weep because for the fool. God, someone said, well, how can you say God a merciful God would do something like that? Deuteronomy quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. See now that I. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Follow me in your Bible, viewers. Viewers, follow me in your Bible. Deuteronomy I want you to know who to blame. Follow me. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. Follow me. See now that I. God talking. God said, See now that I, see now that I even I, even I, am He, am them, am He. Uh, uh, I don't care what go on in the earth. I'm a whole my one God in the face of creation. See now that I, even I, am He, and there is no God with me. Oh, uh, there's no God with the one. What I, did the one God say? I kill. What? I kill. Any killing done? Who? What, who? What? I kill. I can you can you can shoot me all you want. If God don't want me dead, I'm not dying. Huh? God proved that in the Bible. When the Hebrew brothers was put in fire, he took the heat out. Huh? In the book of Joshua, when Abraham was put in fire, he walked around three days and three nights with no hurt. When Daniel was thrown in the den of lions, <laughs> the lions they couldn't do nothing. In other words, God, when God wants you to go, you're going. If God don't want you to go, regardless of what happened, he's going to have you. Hallelujah. He's going to have you right here. Amen. That's why some folk ask me, aren't you afraid to go inside the church and preach and there's a pandemic? Amen. No, I fear God. If it's God's will for me to die, I'm going to die. And me staying home ain't going to keep me alive. Glory to God, but I'm going to do what God commanded me to do in season and out of season as long as breath is in my sanctified body. Huh? What is that? See now that I God am, talking here. See now that I God see now that I even I am he and he and there is no God with me. With me. I kill. I kill. And I make I a lie. I make a lie. I Hallelujah. Wound. I will. And I heal. I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Oh, when God gets you, no one can set you free. Yeah. I say when God gets you, no one can set you free. All right, let's go back and see what Ecclesiastes say again. Back in Ecclesiastes chapter 22 and verse 11. All right, man. Weep for the dead, for he hath lost the light. All right. And weep for the fool, for he wanteth understanding. I want all the governments of the world, every politician, every ambassador. Every president, every king, every queen, anyone that holds any political status, understand something. You're going to stand before God. The bills that you voted on, the past that make law, if that law contradict God's law, you're going to be judged by it. Eh? You're going to be judged by it. I believe one scripture said, judgment would I lead to the line and righteousness to the plumbing and hell shall sweep away the refuge of liars. Uh -huh. Weep for the dead, for he hath lost the light. Yes. And weep for the fool, for he wanteth understanding. And what? Make little weeping for the dead. Make for, little weeping for the dead. For he is at rest. He is at rest. But the life of the, but fool, the life of a fool is worse than death. F foolish, foolish man, foolish woman. Foolish man and foolish woman that are listening to Pastor Jennings now. Mad, upset, cussing trying to convince people that I'm wrong in what I'm preaching, telling the folks I'm arrogant, I'm beside myself, I'm mean, I'm unloving, that don't mean nothing at all. Amen. Hey man, the Bible says what? But the life of the fool, all right, fool, is worse than death. Go ahead, ignore it. Go on out there, go on out there, smoke and drink. 
Amen. Go on out there, have a big time. Go out there and pray to your two and three and four and five gods. Keep peddling that cheap lie. Keep denouncing who Jesus is. Keep denouncing what the Bible said. Reject the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Reject Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Go ahead. Fight what Jesus gave his apostles after the Bible says he gave the commandments to the apostles whom he have chosen. Go ahead. Fight it. A fool. The life of a fool. But the life of a fool. The life of a fool. You go ahead now. Ignore it. <laughs> you so tough. You so wise. You so educated. Keep fighting it. But God help your heart. God knows. Do you hear the Bible talking? But the life of the fool. The life of a fool. Is worse than death. Worse than death. Seven days do men mourn for you him mourn that is dead. for a person seven days or for a period of time. But for a fool and an ungodly man. How long do we mourn for a fool and an ungodly man? All the days of his life. All the days of his life. Amen. You look at the world now. Drive around the streets. Amen. This, these, these days will go down in history. And as months and years pass, that's all these days going to be remembered. History. I guarantee that the world will go back to the way it was. They have done it since man been on the earth. Politicians, when this pandemic clear, will you put prayer back in school? How wicked a fool is. Now politicians say, let us pray to God. But yet when somebody wants to pray in school, they get rebuked fine or charged American government have took the righteousness of God out of school years ago before the teachers start teaching prayer devotion scripture was read but here's a atheist an antichrist who protest God, go to the court and get the Supreme Court on their side. And because they hate for God, ah, throw God out the school. You are hypocrite. You're such hypocrites. You're such political hypocrites. What, what? Give me the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. You don't want God in your school. You don't want prayer in your college. You don't want Bible in the elementary school. When Bible is read, when prayer is done, you know what you heathen say? You're trying to force God on people. All right, then why are you praying now? Why are you praying now? Why are you praying now? Why are you politicians crying? Why are you boohooing? Why are you praying now? And yet many of you governors in the same state that you are head of, you don't allow prayer in your school, Mr. and Mrs. Governor. Let me tell you what the Lord said. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. All right. Not everyone that saith unto me. The Lord says. Why call ye me Lord? And then what did he say? Why call ye me Lord? In St. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. Luke, not Matthew, beg your pardon, the book of Luke. St. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. Luke 6, 46. And why call ye me Lord, why Lord? Why call ye me Lord? And do and not, not the, and do not the things which I say. What I said. God said, I made the woman for the man. Governors are asking God to remove the virus. Yet you sign bill that men can marry men. Why are you calling on God now? Governors agree. Mayors agree. Don't have no prayer in the school. Since the virus hit the earth, let us all, we are in this together. Let us pray. Stop! Stop! Why I call Your me? hypocrisy! Glory to God. 
Stop your hypocriting. The God of heaven said. Why call you me Lord, Why Lord? call on me Lord? And do not the things which America, I say. America, America, America. Why, hallelujah. Glory to God on high. Amen. Why are you calling on God now? Why? And you won't do what he said. Why are you calling on God and you still condone same-sex marriages? Why are you calling on God and you still do uh, racial profiling? Why are you calling on God and many of you government officials help put drugs in the communities of America? Why are you calling on God now? Ah! Why I call you Hallelujah. me Lord, Lord? Glory to God. Glory to God. Ah! Why I call you me Lord, Lord? Amen. Hey man, it, it, it takes God to, hallelujah, it takes God to put this in a man today. It takes God to do it. That's, I, someone said, Pastor, that man, Pastor Jenny, he ain't like, like, he ain't like these freaks. No, I'm not. Uh-uh, brother, I'm out here because of God. Huh? Hey man, I won't say what these other false prophets said. We bring you real Bible because we got a real God. You governors and mayors, you're hypocrites. The moment your bank account is hit, your stock going down, you're losing money, you're losing millions. That means your lifestyle is forced to change. Order in the earth, the holy book says. And why call you me Lord, you Lord? You better give chapter and verse. St. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. You better give chapter and verse. St. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. This is in the old Bible. This is in your Bible. This is in your Bible. The Holy Book says. St. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. And why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Are you going to repent? White brothers and sisters, are you going to repent for thinking you a superior race? Are you going to repent, black man, thinking you are superior? Are you going to repent, CIA, FBI, for help funneling drugs in the country? Are you going to repent for putting a black man and a white man in prison for the exact same crime, but a man of color sentence is longer? What is that? Why call you me Lord, Lord? Lord, thank God we, we, we're going to hit everything under the sun. Huh? Why call you me Lord, Lord? Are you going to repent, I said? Judge, are you going to repent for pronouncing that man partner and partner for life? Are you going to repent, mister? Are you going to repent for leaving your wife and children and take care of some other woman and her kids? Are you going to repent? Are you going to repent for being a worthless bum as a father and won't even lift a time to put food in the mouth of your sons and daughters and yet you go to some church and pretend like you're a Christian? Yeah. Why? Call, call you me Lord, Lord. I want to say he yelling like a crazy man. You want to know why I'm yelling? Give me the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55. <laughs> they want to know why is that man yelling so? Give me Isaiah. Isaiah. Amen. Be quick, son. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter, chapter 58, 58. And verse begin 1. Begin at verse 1. Cry aloud. Cry aloud. Spare oh, not. Glory to God. That's why my mouth is so wide. Cry aloud. Amen. Because I got a woe behind me. Paul said, woe is me. Woe is me. If I preach not the gospel, I don't need money to do it. I don't need people to do it. I got the right woe behind me to do it. And that's God himself. Do you hear the Bible talking? Isaiah 58 and verse 1. That's what? Cry aloud. Cry loud. Spare not. Cry loud. Cry loud. Cry loud. Cry loud. And what? Spare not. Don't spare nobody. Let Listen. me. Don't you show no mercy. Just tell them what they just tell them what they got to hear. How should we talk, son? Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. That's why you hear me blowing. Like a trumpet. Oh, it take God like a trumpet. Like a trumpet. Wow. God and wanna, show God want to wake you up out of your slumber. Huh? Lift up your voice as a trumpet. And show, show my, my people, people their transgressions. They transgression at the house of Jacob. Their sins. Israel, God want to show you your sins. You Hebrew Israelites, 
Always talking about your Jews. God want to show you too. Huh? God want to show you too. You can stand out on a corner and cuss and yell and think you're doing God's will, but you better come on back and repent of your sins and be baptized in water in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach for the remission of your sins and seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost or the whole world is going to be dumped in hell. Go back to the book of Luke, son. Back in Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. You better hear. And why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? You don't want to do what God said. You want God to hurry up and remove the pandemic so the stock market can go up and you can go back to your lifestyle you can go back rapping making your rap videos and uh taking advantage of the women out here out there dancing in shorts half naked shaking your behind everywhere you want the abortion clinics to open back up so you can go around and murder all the all, all the children that you want yeah hey man you want to go out here and still act like a fool don't want to make no change don't want to make no change at all but now you got politicians want to open up in their country before they start discussing what should we do they opening up in prayer you see how wicked your frauds but the moment someone pray in school get arrested bring the word of God back in school they took the Ten Commandments off different buildings why why? Was it hurting you? Were the Ten Commandments offending you? They had taken the commandments off the governmental buildings. But if a woman statue is up there, buck naked, they leave her there. Anything that has to do with God, remove it. And now, a plague that visit the world. And God is asking a question. And why call you me Lord, Lord? Why isn't the mega preachers who's teaching from their bathrooms and living rooms and bedrooms, why don't they read this scripture to you? It's in your Bible. Luke 6 and verse 46. Hard head, stubborn, rebellious. It's in your Bible. Give chapter and verse. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. The word of God says. And why call ye me Lord, Lord? Why call ye me Lord, and, Lord? And do not the things which I say. And you don't want to obey him. You don't want to obey him. Stop your drinking. Stop your murder. Young men, young women in the hood. Stop your senseless gang banging. Stop robbing because stores are closed now. Stop using that as an opportunity to burglarize them and to steal their merchandise. What have you accomplished? What have you learned? Stop your kidnapping. Stop your trafficking of children. The Holy Ghost said. And why call ye me Lord, Lord? Lord hallelujah. And, Glory to God. And There's not a message like this in the world, God knows. I'm warning you now. I'm warning you. Glory to God. This is a warning from God to you. God says. Why call you me Lord, Lord? Put the prayer back in schools. Before any classroom start, go back. Don't be scared to use the name of Jesus Christ. Don't get in there. Uh, well, to whoever the higher power is. Oh no! Call him by name. Whatsoever! Oh, it take God ye do and word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't be afraid. Get prayer back in the schools. Get the Bible back in your schools. What kind of world do you expect for it to be? with no God, no fear for God, no reverence for God, no respect for God. Just read your Bible. 
before the judgment of God ever came upon a people, God always sent a warner ahead of the judgment. Bible saying, and they will not hear the word of the Lord. Go back to the book of Ecclesiasticus, and then we'll close back out in the book of Galatia. Back in Ecclesiastes. Hear us. Hear now. Come on, son. Back in Ecclesiastes 22 and verse 11. Yes. Weep for the dead, for he hath lost the life. Uh -huh. And weep for the fool, for he wanteth understanding. Make little weeping for the dead, for he is at rest. Yes. But the life of the fool is worse than death. Uh -huh. Seven days do men mourn for him that is dead. Yes. But a fool and an ungodly man all the days of his life. Yes. Talk not much with a fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. listen. Any time I preach, you don't want to stand for the word of God. He's foolish. I don't care if he's your friend. The Bible gives you advice. Talk not much with a fool. The reason why God don't want you to talk much to a fool because you may end up a fool like him or her and end up with the same fictitious, ungodly belief. Some fool will say, well, that's my friend. Uh-huh, and ain't no one should be closer to you than God. That way, when your so-called friend go another direction that contradict God, you won't follow him, you won't follow her regardless of how close y'all get. The Holy Ghost give advice here. Talk not much with a fool. I'm warning you. Old man, middle-aged man, young man. Old woman, middle-aged woman, young woman. I'm warning you. Talk not much with a fool. Don't you talk much to a fool. And go not to him that has don't no understanding. Don't go to him that don't know no understanding. Beware of him. Look out. Beware. Back off. And Lest thou have trouble. You'll, that's what you're going to get. And thou shalt never be defiled with his foolery. Uh, Depart from him. Get away from him. And thou shalt find rest. Hell yeah, you get away from him that denounce anything in that Bible. Anything in the word of God he or she denounce, get away from him. Get away from him. When you do that, the Bible says you'll have rest. And thou shalt find rest. You see, the reason why you won't have rest because they're going to keep calling you or emailing you, trying to push that unbelief. And if you weak, they soon going to win you over and you're going to believe the same rotten, no good lies that he or she believed. That's why God said, don't you talk much to a fool. Depart from him. Depart from him. And thou shalt find rest. Oh, you'll have some rest. And never be dis disquieted with madness. And what is heavier than lead? Oh, my, my, my. It's just something about this scripture that's giving me chills. In know. Ecclesiasticus 22 <laughs> and verse 14. Oh, look at here. Human family, give chapter and verse again. In the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 22 and verse 14. Give chapter and verse again. In the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 22 we're at, we're at verse 14. Let's the book of Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sarich. Chapter 22. And viewers, you will find people throughout social media will say, oh, he reading from one of those strange books. The Bible says this, all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished under all good work. Ain't nothing strange about this. This is nothing but you. The reason why folks want to disregard this because they themselves are heavier than lead. And what is heavier than lead? Oh, hallelujah to God. What is heavier than lead? And what is the name thereof but a fool? Do I got any lead viewers today? Do I got any lead listeners? Amen. Is your husband lead, wife lead, children? Preacher, pastor, you got more than one God, use a lead preacher. Yeah. Heavier than lead. Hey man, you're, you're heavier than lead. Heavy. You're you one of them old heavy lead preachers. You don't believe that Jesus Christ is God, not his flesh, but the spirit that was in him was God, lead preachers. Hmm? You believe there's more than one church? More than one church? And the Bible said we are baptized by one spirit into one body. You're heavier than lead. Everybody, everybody now. Yeah, man, come on back to the Bible. Repent of your sins, Mr. Arrogant, self-righteous man, atheist who believe there is no God. I'm talking to you, too. Well, my parents told me it wasn't no God. Your parents lied to you all your life. Your mom is a liar. Your daddy is a liar. They are heavier than lead. Heavier so, than therefore, lead. you was raised and taught by fools. Huh? What is heavier than lead? What is heavier than lead? And what is the name thereof? What is the name thereof? But a fool. What do you call it? A fool. What do you call it? A fool. A Christian. A fool. A Christian. Fool. Don't blame me. Don't blame Pastor Geno Jennings. Come on back to the Bible. 
All right, come real quick. Sand and salt and a mass of iron uh-huh. is easier to bear. Wait a minute. Sand. Sand and salt. Salt. And a mass of iron. And a mass of iron is easier to bear. Is easier to tolerate than a man without understanding. Than a man without understanding. Oh, yeah. You know, it's hard to get through to a fool because he's set in his own way. The word of God says a fool ways are right in his own eyes. You show him or her what the Bible said. Sometimes they get stubborn in age. That's why the Bible said aged men are not always wise. They get stubborn, they get hard here, they get self-righteous, can't tell them nothing and don't want the change. But God know how to bring the right thing that a change creation. You better go to the 23rd verse quickly of the 22nd chapter of the book of Sarah. Now in Ecclesiasticus. Now Read book- quick so we can close out back in the Galatia. All right. Back in Ecclesiastes 22, we're at verse 23. Yes. Be faithful to thy neighbor in his poverty, and that thou mayest rejoice in his prosperity. Abide steadfast unto him in the time of his trouble. Yes. That thou mayest be heir with him in his heritage. Yes. For a mean estate is not always to be commended. Yes. Nor the rich that is foolish to be had in admiration. Uh-huh. As the vapor and smoke of a furnace goeth before the fire. As the vapor and smoke go before fire. So reviling before blood. Yes. I will not be ashamed to defend a friend. Uh-huh. Neither will I hide myself from him. Yes. And if any hat. And if any evil happen unto me by him, yes. everyone that heareth it will beware of him. All right. Now in Ecclesiastes 22 and verse 27. Yes, Who? look up 23. 22, 23. That's what I want. 22, 23. Ecclesiastes All right. 22, verse 23. Follow me. Be faithful to thy neighbor in his poverty. Yes. That thou mayest rejoice in his prosperity. And? Abide steadfast unto him in the time of his trouble. Yes. That thou mayest that thou mayest be heir with him in his heritage. Yes. For a mean estate is not always to be contemned. Yes. Nor the rich that is foolish to nor be. Nor the rich. Nor the rich that is foolish. That is foolish. To be had in admiration. So it's not always in admiring a rich person. I want what he got. I want what she got. Do they have God? And that's what the world do. They hold the rich in admiration. Whatever style the rich come out with, everybody follow it. If the rich say, be naked, everybody naked. If the rich say, get high, everybody want to get high. If the rich say, get new lips, new breasts, new hips. Everybody want new breasts, new lips, new hips. They make the rich as a measuring stick. We want God to be the measuring stick for creation. Repent of your sins. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. God is using this time to give you the opportunity to come out of your churches. Come out. Come out. When this pandemic clear up and you're allowed to go back to your church, you make it up in your mind before it clear. I'm not going back to that false church no more. No more. No more at all. Huh? No more. Remember what the word of God said in Galatia, the third chapter. In verse 1. Verse 1. O foolish Galatians. O foolish Galatia. Who hath bewitched you? O foolish world. Foolish world. Foolish world. Who hath bewitched you? Who tricked you? Who seduced you? Who conned you? Who that- made you such a fool? Who made you so arrogant and so ignorant? that you should not obey the truth. Obey the truth. Obey the Bible. Get ready to obey the word of God. Tune in again at 4 o'clock, viewers. Tune in again at 4 o'clock. Stay away from the foolish that denounce the message of holiness. Save yourself like so many thousands are doing. When this pandemic is over, I advise you that been waiting and putting it off, you better run to baptism. You better run to the truth of God by the thousands and walk with the truth of of the gospel. May God keep you. May God bless you is our prayer. Tune in again at 4 o'clock. God bless you. Amen.